So this is the start of a new video series on binomial expansion. I'm going to start though with something completely unrelated called the choose function. So I'm not going to do any binomial expansion in this video. I'm just going to talk about this thing, the choose function. I'm going to start with a question. Um, if you have five cards, question, uh, cards A, B, C, D, and E, then how many ways can you choose three? So for example, one choice of three might be A, uh, C, and D. That's choosing three cards of the five. But you could also choose, for instance, B, C, and E. Right? That would be a different three cards. And the question is, in how many ways can you select a different three, uh, set of three cards from the five? And we call this five choose three. Uh, and we have two different ways of representing it, either 5C3 or 5, 3, like in vector form. Um, and, and this is just the number of different ways that I can select three cards from a pile of five or you know whatever other objects you want. And I can get my calculator to work this out very quickly for me if I just quickly go to my calculator. 5C3, uh, so 5, and then C is shift divide, that's the C, and then 3, and I get that there are 10 ways of doing it. But kind of what I'm obviously interested in is, is how does my calculator know that? Um, like, how does it know to do that? Uh, how does it know the answer is 10? So let's work it out. Firstly, we've got to choose three cards, right? So you've got to choose whichever three cards you want to, 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 to start with. Now, how many ways are there to choose three cards just randomly? Well, you've got a selection of five cards here, which means your first choice, you have five options. Now, once you've taken a card, say that you've chosen B as your first card, there are four cards left, A, C, D, and E. So you have four options to choose your second card from. And then the third card, now two of the cards are gone, say B and C are gone, you have three cards left to choose from. So there are five times four times three ways of choosing a selection of three cards from five, except it doesn't quite work that simply. So say that I chose C first, there are four cards left to choose from, then I choose B, there are only three cards left to choose from, then I choose uh, E, and that's my third choice. So there are five choices to start with, times four times three choices at the end. But it's not quite as simple as that, because if you look at here, I've chosen B, C, and E. And this method would also work if I chose a E first, then C, then B. But I've got the same selection of cards here, right? So this uh, maths, this is massively overcounting the number of ways that I can choose three cards from five because it counts taking, uh, what order was this? C, then B, then E. It counts that as different than taking E, then C, then B. But it's not really. We've got the same three cards there. Um, so we need to eliminate all of these extra double counts um, some way. So how do we do that? Well, what we need to do is we need to think about how many ways are there to arrange the three cards um, that we've picked out. Once you've chosen whichever three it's going to be by doing this maths, how, do, how many ways are there to arrange, uh, say, B, C, and E into different sets and therefore get rid of them because we only want one of them? We, are, we only care about, we don't care about the order, so we only care about having cards B, C, and E. Now, again, if you're going to arrange these cards, do you have this? we can list them out first. BEC would be one arrangement. Then BCE would be another arrangement. Uh, CBE, CEB, ECB, EC, uh, EBC, sorry, ECB. And if you notice, I've listed these out quite um, in quite a uh, structured way. And then I've got the Bs first, and I swapped the other two. Then I took the C's and I swapped the other two, then I took the E's and I swapped the other two. And we can count up clearly that there are six ways to arrange these cards. So when I do that first bit of maths of five times four times three, I'm going to have to divide by six to get rid of all the copies because I only care about one of these. Like I don't care about the different arrangements of them. I just want one list. Um, so, okay, well, how many ways are there to arrange these if it was not just three? Well, you can see and if you look at the front row, you've got three ways of choosing um, whichever card comes first, B, C, or E. Now, once you've chosen which one of those cards come first, you only have two choices for the second card. If you've got B first, you only have the choices E and C. So you've got two choices there. And once you've chosen your second card, you only have one choice left, right? So there are three times two times one choices to arrange three cards, like E, C, and B, uh, which is six, which, is, which are all the ones I list out here. Three times two times one is six. So in uh, to summary, to, in summary, five choose three, is five times four times three on top, which is the number of ways you can pick a selection of three cards, either A, B, D, or B, C, D, or C, D, E, or whatever. And then you have to divide by the number of copies that there are of those three cards that you've chosen, right? And this is how my calculator can work out five choose three, because of course, five times four is 20 times three is 60. This is six, six divided by six is 10, which if you go back is what the calculator gave us, it was 10. 
Um, but what I actually want is I actually kind of want uh, a formula for this. Um, so, for example, if I was doing any number, choose any other number, I'd like to have a quick way of doing this that, that wasn't dependent on me figuring out every time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do something a bit weird, which is times this fraction by 2 times 1, both top and bottom. Like, I'm allowed to do that because that stays the same, right? I've, I've done it to the top and bottom. It's just like times by 1. And now we have this neat little bit of notation here, which is when you take a number and multiply it by every integer below it, all the way down to 1, sequentially, we call it a factorial. So 5 factorial is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And we can see that here. But on the bottom here, we can also see... 3 factorial and 2 factorial, right? Because this is 3 times 2 times 1, so that's 3 factorial. And this is 2 times 1, so that's 2 factorial. Um, by the way, n factorial is just when you go from n all the way down to 1, obviously. So 5 choose 3 is 5 factorial, which is on top, over 3 factorial, 2 to factorial. And then you kind of notice, well, actually, 2 factorial, that's suspiciously like 5 minus 3, right? Uh, and now I've, I've taken this 5 choose 3 thing, whether it's in the C form or the vector form, and I've only described it in terms of fives and threes and factorials. And this allows us to maybe hypothesize that if you're doing n, so if you have n things and you're trying to choose k of them, which can be noted by n choose k or n k in a vector, we can hypothesize that it might just be n factorial over k factorial n minus k factorial, just like this was. Now, of course, this is just a hypothesis. So let's actually show it. And I'm going to show it in exactly the same way that I just showed five choose three. So let's pretend that we have n cards lined up here from 1 all the way to n, skipping a few in the middle because I'm not going to draw them all. I'm going to choose k cards. Now, how many ways are there to choose k cards? Well, there's just, I've got n options for my first card to pick. Once I pick one, I have n minus one options left, which I then can pick from. I then have n minus two options left. Um, and so I just multiply those all along. Now, however, I've made a slight mistake here because I'm picking k cards. So just like when I picked three cards, it was five times four times three. I had three things multiplying. When I pick K cards, I need to have K things multiplying, right? Because I'm doing K selections. They're going to be K things multiplying together. Now, how many have I got here? Well, if this is a one and then a two and then a three and then a four and then all the way up to a K, there's K things just here, which means I actually have K plus one things multiplying because of this term. So I need to chop off this last term. Now, the term before it, if it's going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way up to k minus 2, k minus 1, k, the term before this is n minus k minus 1. Because, of course, k minus 1 is the thing before k. So I've chopped off this last term here, and I'm actually going to stop here. Um, now, of course, I can multiply out those brackets and say it's this. So this is the number of ways to just select k cards um, from a pile. Now, of course, we already discussed when you take those k cards, however, what this math is doing is thinking that the order of those k cards really matters when it really doesn't, right? Um, as we've already discussed. So I need to get rid of all the duplicates. And just like when I have three cards, there are three factorial ways to arrange them together. When you have k cards, there are k factorial ways to rearrange them. Um, so the, the number of ways I can choose k cards from a list of n is this divided by this, right? So that's going to be my n choose k. And now I'm going to do a very similar thing to what I did before, which is I'm going to add on a bunch of stuff to the end of these in order to give myself some nice factorials. So as we already saw, the next term after this would be n minus k. Then it would be n minus k, and then you take away yet another one, and then you go all the way down until you get all the way down to 2 and 1. And likewise down here, I'm going to times by exactly the same thing to make sure the top and the bottom stays the same. But now, of course, if we look at the top row here, this is just n factorial. It's n times everything sequentially below it all the way down to 1. This is just k factorial. And this red bit here is just n minus k factorial, because it's n minus k times the thing below it, times the thing below that, all the way down to 1. So that's our formula for n choose k. Um, and we can apply this if we want to. Um, so this is how our calculator does it. We can apply it now. If you have eight things, how many ways are there to choose five? Well, we just break out this little formula. We can, of course, type that into a calculator if we really want to. Um, I've shown you it once, but I might just quickly show you it again. We have 8, then you press the C button, which is shift divide, then you press 5, and your calculator works out at 56. But just before we finish up here, I do want to show you that this is quite nice to work out by hand, um, because I find it really satisfying. Uh, we have this formula of n factorial over k factorial, n minus k factorial. So 8 choose 5 is 
8 factorial over 5 factorial 8 minus 5 factorial. But something really nice happens here. If I, if I write the factorials out properly, of course I can say 8 minus 5 is 3 factorial, but now if I write the factorials out properly, this is just 8 times everything below it, then we've got 5 times everything below it, and then 3 times everything below it. But look at how gorgeous this is. Everything below 5 cancels with everything below 5 here. So all of that goes away with all of that, because that's just the same. 3 times 2, and this always kind of happens, it's really nice, 3 times 2 is just the same as 6. So that can go away. And all I actually have to do is 8 times 7 divided by 1, which of course doesn't do anything. So 8 times 7 is 56. So I find working out, factor, uh, working out choose functions by hand very satisfying. If you don't, that's absolutely fine. But you're a loser.